Hey everybody, so we just finished RTX here in Austin, RTX Austin as it's known, and inevitably, whenever we're at RTX Austin, we get tons and tons of questions about how do I get a job at Rooster Teeth, which I always try to tell people, you don't want a job at Rooster Teeth, what you want to do is make your own Rooster Teeth, but essentially, we get asked a lot, how do I get started in entertainment? And uh, whenever we are on stage or on panels or something, the history of Rooster Teeth comes up and how we got started. And that's kind of my story and Jeff and Gus and Joel and Matt's story of how we got into entertainment. But I thought it'd be fun to walk around and talk to the other people who work at Rooster Teeth and see how they got started. What was their first job ever that they got a paycheck for? And then what was their break into entertainment? Hey everybody, it's Joe Nicolosi, writer and director of RVB season 15. What was your first job you ever had? I was a wedding videographer in New York for like 10 years. I shot weddings and bar mitzvahs. I set up the lights and then I rotated them whenever I moved around and then tried not to fall asleep by the end of the night. And this is in New York, so it was a lot of like gangster weddings. Yeah. It's like a lot of fun. I guess that was technically your first foray into entertainment. Yeah. So your first job was kind of your first break into working in production or entertainment. So then how did you end up getting the job at Rooster Teeth? You made South by Southwest bumpers. bumpers. You submitted. I volunteered for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. you essentially, to the festival, you submitted these little short films little short for every movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which actually gets seen more than anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a couple of them went really viral, had no crew, had no budget. Just like work my ass up on those. If you can ever make film festival bumpers, it's awesome because you have a captive audience and, uh, and important people in the room all the time. This is Cohen, everybody. Uh, we get asked a lot, uh, how do I get started? Like, how do I get going in entertainment? How do I get a animation career going? How do I get a job at Rich Teeth? Stuff like that. Sure. What was the first job you ever had? First paycheck you ever received? I think I worked in a feed mill when I was 14 years old. Yeah. Yeah, uh, first first job in the industry was uh, I worked shoveling horse shit and, and uh, wrangler stalls. I actually was, I worked as a wrangler. And, uh, wrangler for what? For uh, for movies like Ride with the Devil, it were big, gigantic, like his, historical movies. And then I kind of worked my way up from that. And then when I got out of college, I decided I was gonna be a writer director. Uh, then I found my way into doing like art department stuff. I was storyboarders for many, many years. Storyboarded on movies like Machete. I worked on movies with Coen Brothers and Tarantino. And just, uh, I did a whole bunch of other jobs. Uh, what um, I think the biggest thing for me is I, early on I agreed to myself that I was going to be like a journeyman and learn as many different crafts as possible. And once I figured out exactly what I wanted to do, which was more kind of in the production realm, directing realm, I kind of headed for that. And then kind of honed in exactly what I was good at. If I were to say like the most important thing that I took away from it all is to uh, focus on one point, but be aware of everything around you. Don't be afraid to change what that one thing is over time. Yes. But when you're doing the job, do the job. Right? Yeah, and also get to know yourself. Be always asking yourself, like, am I suited for this role? Because what happens a lot of times is people get locked into a role they may not be good for. And you have to always be questioning yourself, am I going down the right path? Be willing to jump onto another road. And even if it's it, it makes means that you have to double back, do what's right for you in your career. What was your first job ever? It was, I used to do scorekeeping at a Little League field when I was a teenager in the summers. Really? So it was like a, I wouldn't say it's like a full-time job. And then what was, uh, what was your break into entertainment? Uh, break into entertainment? Or rooster teeth, I guess? I guess, I mean, but we made websites before that. I, I used to do the garage sale column. People yeah. seem to like that. We'd go to garage sales every weekend and look for video games and accessories. We estimate we had about 3,000 readers on that about site? About 3,000 a day. Yeah. And then Gus also was, for a long time, he was the face of Rooster Teeth because he was the only guy who ever appeared in any of our videos. Yep. He, it's, it's, people recognize him more than any of us for like the first year of Red vs. Blue. That's, br that's brand equity, my friend. Yeah. Brand building! <laughs> Hashtag goals. I gotta zoom in on everybody at the end. Boom. Boom. I look best when zoomed. It's Bethany, everybody. Fresh off of RTX. I'm dead. So, I'm asking everybody. Okay. What was your first job that you ever had? I was a hostess at a Cajun restaurant. It was a place called Razoo's. <laughs> I know Razoo's. I know. So, uh, what would you say was your first break into what you do now? I had an internship at an art gallery in college, and I met some really cool people through there, so they gave me my first events job. So that kind of led me to travel a lot and like go to different places, and I kind of learned from them. And how'd you end up at Rooster um, I wanted to move back to Austin or to Texas um, to be closer to family. Gus and I hit it off and 
he hired me pretty quickly. And then I moved here a month later. You will it be happened the, really, really fast. You will be the only person that I talked to today who says, I hit it off with guts right now. <laughs> I don't know why, we've just always been buds. That'll be a unique answer. Yeah. All right, well, congrats on RTX 2017. Yeah, thank you, Bernie. RTX Austin 2017. RTX Austin, now we're starting on London. We can take a couple of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. So really quickly, what was everybody's first job? What was your first job, Ash? Uh, first job in this... Period, like, no. This first job where you got a paycheck. Um, I was the, the dessert girl at a restaurant. Dessert girl at a restaurant. And then, Eddie, what was your first job? Do you mean like post college or like first job? No, like Eddie, you got a paycheck. When is Hobby Lobby. You were in Hobby Lobby. How old were you? Hobby Lobby. I was 16. Were you a cashier or were you just like stocking? Stocking. Got to rearrange all those ornaments after everybody <laughs> knocks yep. around. Mika, what was your first gig? I was a cheerleading camp counselor. Cheerleading camp counselor? Yep. It's a glamorous first How job. How does that not surprise me? Were you yeah. like, like a sex ed advisor? I was. I was. I was at the <laughs> University of Texas. I was a sexual health peer advisor. I got that job because I was an orientation advisor, and every woman who got a new prescription for birth control pills had to take my class. So, what was everyone's first job in entertainment? Ash, what was your first job in entertainment? Uh, or your first, I, what would you consider to be your break? My break, uh, I made video game fan sites, and uh, EA contacted me, and I ended up doing a bunch of stuff with them, and that's what dominoed one thing into the next thing into the next thing. But big break would be joining the Frag Dolls. Then that you guys were the professional gaming team for Ubisoft. Yeah. Yeah, it was the first all-female professional gaming team. How'd you get it? Audition? Yeah, um, I had to submit an application. I had to go through a bunch of like interviews uh, and gameplay tests, and then they flew me to San Francisco, and I interviewed and played some more, and then they offered me a spot on the team. Nice. Cool. What about you, Mika? What was your break in entertainment? Uh, I think it was the really weird coincidence of running into Gavin at Sushi one day in LA, because that started the conversation with everybody here. I went to RTX and met Jeff, and Jeff was like, we'd like to have you in some uh, Let's Plays sometime. How about you come do some test runs? And uh, all of that culminated, and one day when Matt asked me to come do Extra Life for a second year, he was like, we'd like to offer you a job. And Eddie, we, Eddie, we had kind of a similar story, because you you came through collaboration as well, right? Yeah, yeah, there was, uh, my friends and I were making kind of gaming videos and machinima stuff on the side, and we had a portal video called Day in the Life of a Turret that went viral. <laughs> And uh, it went viral and it got seen by a lot of people, but it got seen by Mr. Bernie Burns, who invited us to come up and check stuff out at Rooster Teeth. That was back in like 2007? Yeah. 2008? Yep. Yeah, and then you were making your series. They had a very popular Machinima series as well. And we it's just weird, because we always wanted to work together. The first thing you ever worked on was season six of Red vs. Blue, yeah, right? with that opening shot of uh, Reconstruction. Yeah, and then years and years later, we he wrote the Red vs. Blue uh, fan guide, and then got the job writing for the now. Yeah. Patrick? Yeah? It's Patrick, everybody. Hi. What was the first job you ever had? I worked at a place called Taco Villa in West Texas. And then what do you consider to be your first break into entertainment? I was working as a production assistant at a news station, and they were working on a big sales presentation, and they needed someone who could draw um, cartoon sketch on poster board and nobody in the station could draw and I I said I can do it and they moved me into the creative team. I didn't know you could draw. I haven't drawn in a long time but yeah I used to could. You don't want to tell people around here because then they use you for everything. Exactly. Yeah they come say hey make us a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Hey Ez what's going on? Nothing much how you doing? I'm doing well doing well. What was the first job that you ever had? Like yeah. for, a, for a paycheck, what was your first job ever? My first job ever was a sports sports store, like selling shoes, basically. And then what, what do you think was your first break into the entertainment industry? I was, uh, it was after I finished college and um, I was trying to figure out where to go with my life. And I was sitting in a cafe um, after my shift as a waiter. And I happened to sit next to a guy who was writing talking points uh, for Al Gore, the former vice president who was buying a television network. And 
I leaned over and said, what are you working on? And he said, Al's buying this TV network. Um, and that was my inroad into getting a job at Current TV, um, where I started as an intern, became an assistant. And when I left, I was the number two person in all programming. So I, I remember that conversation very well. That was my that was the moment where um, it was the, you know, they always talk about that trapped in an elevator or in an elevator ride. Like, you know, you got you have 30 seconds to pitch someone. Yep. Like, that was my that was my elevator pitch moment where it's just like that life-changing moment where either you go and set yourself outside of your comfort zone and you ask the question, you, uh, you know, interrupt someone, you do something that you, you know is outside of what you normally would do, but, you know, uh, it's a kind of a put-up-or-shut-up moment for, for, for you, and um, that was mine. Getting through. Right there. What was the first job you ever had? What was your first job that gave you a paycheck? Technically, my first job was a paper round, which I did one time, and I realized that all of the effort and back and forth trips to get papers wasn't worth the four quid I was going to make. So I dumped the papers in the woods, took the four quid, and then I quit. Yeah, and then after that, I worked in a supermarket, and I liked that job. That was fun. You stocked veg? Yeah, I was in charge of the fruit and veg, king of bananas. And then what was your break into the entertainment industry? What was the moment where you were like, oh, this is my break. This is looking back. Yeah, I just met the guy that had those high speed cameras. And I was like, that's better than stocking veg. Can I work with you? Did that for about a year for no money. Just sort of went on his jobs while also working at Waitrose and going to school. So pretty busy, but worth it in the end. So for me, my first job that I ever had was I got a job uh, making and delivering subs for Blimpy Subs, which doesn't really exist around here anymore, but it might be where you live. Red vs. Blue hit when I was 29 years old, and I had made movies, I made videos, everything, but I think the big break was a video that I made with Gus went viral. It was the Apple Switch ad parody, and what was really important was a company named Computer Gaming World contacted me and said, hey, we want to put your video on the CD on the cover of our magazine. I kind of used that opportunity of promotion to launch my next big thing, which was really my first big thing. I have had a job every single day of my life since I was 18 years old. I had a job before this in telecom and then started Rooster Teeth and been here for 13 years, so I have never been out of work a single day in all that time. I need a vacation. All right, so as you can tell, everybody's career path is different, and you never know what it's gonna take in order to get to the place that you wanna be. But there's some common themes. I mean, you can see in everyone I spoke to, they all took whatever job they could get whenever they could. They also made themselves available for opportunities as they came up. And the other thing was, they were able to identify opportunities that could lead to something bigger, and they jumped on them, even if it wasn't clear at the moment what that would lead to. Looking back in hindsight, they can see how it helped their career. I hope you learned a little bit about what it takes to get a career in entertainment going. I guess you just kinda wait for the opportunities to arise. Well, that is a story of how a lot of the people at Rooster Teeth were able to get their start. Hopefully, if you're in that position in your career, maybe you learned something from this. We'll see you guys next week.